So today, I am going to be working on the Spidicules Survivor set from Kingdom Death. Uh, it's a line of miniatures for a board game. They're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the quality of the sculpts is fantastic. It has a very uh, Clive Barker-esque kind of body horror aesthetic to a lot of the pieces that I personally find quite appealing. Uh, definitely mature. So today we're going to be focusing on the skin tones right, for the survivors themselves proper here. Right, and you know when starting out a lot of people they use just a triad of skin tone sets from whatever manufacturer, Citadel, uh, Privateer Press or whatever where they go darkest skin, medium skin, lightest skin. But you don't quite get uh, enough nuance and control with those after you've uh, progressed a little as a painter. So today I'm going to be using a combination of four colors to uh, paint the skin tones, all of which are Vallejo model color. We'll have our base, which is Vallejo model color beige red. Good stuff, good stuff. This is a uh, real neutral kind of Caucasian skin tone that, uh, you know, will act as the basis. We'll be shading that with a combination of Vallejo model color black red, which is showing up a little redder in the feed than it is uh, in real life. I think I have the uh, saturation turned up a little there. In addition, we'll be shading it and more tinting it, honestly, with Vallejo model color violet red. This adds that blush to the cheeks and the knuckles, uh, lips, places like that. And then we'll be bringing it all up with Vallejo model color ivory. This is a lovely eggshell off-white kind of taupe. Uh, you don't want to use a pure white uh, except for when you're doing extreme reflective highlights and this is generally in about 90% of pieces where I'm not doing non-metallic metals about as white as my uh, color schemes go that being said let's get started here so we're going to take our beige red, our beige skin tone and we're going to shake the bejesus out of it really go to town. These Vallejo paints are great, but they do separate some if they haven't been used in a few days. And we'll take that and we'll add just a couple of good drops to our palette here. And then since we're going to be mixing this with these other colors, right, shake the bejesus out of them as well. We're going to lay them on our wet palette next to the pile of beige red so that we can freely mix our flesh tone and get a variety of tones real easily and recreate the nuance that a uh, normal skin color would have. And since these are accents, we don't need quite as much as we do of the base pool. And less is more, you can always add more, but once you put it on the palette, unless you're using it, you've wasted it, so. Try and bear that in mind. Get our little pool of ivory here. And the white colors tend to be thicker, and they tend to require a little more shaking on account of the fact that they generally have a greater pigment density than the colored. In order to get a good opacity with white, they need a lot of little pieces of pigment in their acrylic medium. And we're going to be using just a little bit of that black-red, so... Alright, there we go. There we have our basic skin tone. Going to get our Windsor & Newton size 2 sable round tip brush wet in our water, get those bristles nice and damp. And then we're going to take our figure here like so. And we'll begin applying the base skin tone, which is just going to be picking up a little bit of this beige red, just with the tip of the brush. 
See, a lot of people when they start out painting miniatures, they think they want their whole brush just saturated in paint, and that's wrong for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you'll get more paint on the brush than you'll find manageable when you're worrying about like the, uh, you know, surface tension and qualities of the paint itself. And then secondly, once paint works its way up into your ferrule, the little metal part there at the end of the bristles, your brush is going to spread. It's going to become a lot harder to clean and a lot harder to use with any kind of detail work. You can always dip your paint, your brush back in the paint. You see this first step goes pretty quick. It doesn't require a ton of precision. We're just getting that nice base coat on there evenly so that uh, you know the whole face is covered with this skin tone. She has some jewelry on her face here that you can't really make out at the distance, but we're not going to be too terribly concerned about that just yet. Go ahead and your rotator. Get a little more of your paint. And we're looking for just a nice even coat here. Easy peasy. It'll be a little sloppy if you get some on her hair or on the hood or whatever. That's not an issue. We're going to go back and do a bunch of layers, so we can cover up any mistakes. Little happy accidents, as Bob Ross would say. There we go. We got her face fairly well coated, just a little more hair on her cheek. Need just a little more attention. And we're gonna let this dry for a minute. And you can do this naturally which is what we're going to do here because I'm painting on four figures and they're going to rotate in and out or you can grab yourself your hair dryer, your wife's hair dryer, however that shakes out and just blow it dry. That works just fine too. Get her hand going there. This is a pretty shockingly bright color at this point in the game because the rest of the surrounding colors are black so it's looking way more white than it's going to eventually. Also bear in mind that we're going to be shading this and toning and tinting these skin colors. So if you take a look at it now and it looks real glaring, don't worry, there's stuff to come. Here, on this hand, in between these fingers. Just work your way around. It's always good to move your model and not your brush whenever you can. So that way you're building up the muscle memory of the brush. You have it in the same spot for control. You have everything nice and sorted out there. Look at how fast this is coming together. Make sure that you're looking at all the angles there. So we're getting the back of her palm here, the inside of her thumb. And if we get some over on the halberd shaft, that's not a big deal again, because we're going to be painting over it. Especially since we're going to be painting over that halberd shaft with browns. So that's a darker color. And it is going to cover this light color much more easily than, say, if we were painting the halberd shaft white and we were painting the hand brown. Less layers. We'll probably even be able to do it in a single pass if we have our paint opacity right. There we go. And this doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. You just want a nice base coat in, so you're getting all the details coated and ready to go. It's just your little road map for the next steps here, helping distinguish the shapes, starting to think about where the lights are going to fall, how that's all going to play out. is base coated on those layers. Let's get a little more on this side of the face here. And then we'll move on to the next fellow. Just set her aside real fast and take a sip off our beverage. And we'll move on to this next gal here. This lady here is cracking a bull whip. Very authoritative. Rinsing our brush out. 
picking up a little more of that base skin tone and just repeating the steps from earlier just applying our base tone on her face getting a nice even layer some on the inside of the head there that's not even a point of stress that's why we're painting using the inside out method as well here at miniatures of tomorrow we always paint the interior most surfaces first then we work our way out so that generally means you're painting on the skin then you're painting on the layer that rests up top of the skin then you're painting on the armor then you're painting on the cloak or whatever lies outside the armor there and that takes these, what could be, you know, screw ups and turns them into just happy little accidents that don't really matter. Speeds up your paint time, makes it less stressful. It's a win-win. like this you notice here I'm not using the tip of the brush I'm using the side of the brush that way we keep a nice strong point on our Windsor and Newtons I like this brush a lot but it is uh, not cheap it's about 17 bucks a pop and I paint every day for hours a day and with appropriate brush control and good brush cleaning and maintenance one of them lasts me about three months But really, when you're starting out, you can use any round tip sable brush that'll hold a good point. You'll find your own personal favorites eventually. Getting this lady's top of her thumb in there, the inside of those fingers. And again, it's not about perfection, just about our base coats. squared away. Main event still coming, but it's a ways off. There we go, that's a well-coated hand. Let's go back to her face there. The brush was wet when I was painting her face, and so you can see some of the gray showing through from the primer there. And we want a nice even coat of color for our next step here, so we just go right back over it and apply another light layer now that the layer below has had time to dry. She's holding this Chris dagger here in her back hand. Right, just repeat our step right here. Just getting a nice base coat on that hand. Try not to knock my cameras too much here. This is my first video. Um, things are going to improve a lot as I get my setup more optimized. Uh, I have a nice condenser mic, but I ordered the sound stand over Labor Day weekend, so it's not coming in until tomorrow. So I'm jumping the gun a little on the sound quality. I haven't really listened to one of these videos yet, so uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. But that'll improve along with the picture quality too as I get things squared away alright got those hands nice and base coated and we set her aside we rinse out our brush you want to constantly keep your brush rinsed so that none of those particles have time to dry on your bristles 
part of good brush maintenance, and after you've started doing it for a few months, it'll become second nature to you. Moving on to this fellow here, he's holding a dagger and a big old bone sword. Just grabbing more of our base color, painting his face in. Nice even coat. He's got a little goatee. We're just going to paint that flesh color for now because again we're going to come back in and paint his hair and all that later. And you see here I'm getting paint every which way. As long as your paint is sufficiently thin, which it will be if you're using a wet palette and just the tip of your brush, it doesn't matter. You're not clogging up any details. Just have fun with it. There we go. Got his face all coated. Moving on to his hands now. Looks like he's wearing some bone gauntlets too. That'll be fascinating. For those of you unfamiliar with Kingdom Death, you play not as an individual character, but as a village of people just trying to survive in this crazy world. And it has, uh, all these expansion packs that each contain a monster. This one is Spidicules, and he's a giant carnivorous spider that uses the torso of your loved ones like an anglerfish lure to uh, hunt more of you. And uh, he's a nasty looking bugger, or she, I suppose. But uh, after you've defeated it, you then hack up its body and use it to prepare your survivors. And these folks are the village survivors that have benefited from that dead giant spider thing. And so the armor they're wearing and the weapons they're wielding are literally made out of parts of its body. And that's why we got these giant bone swords and whatnot because, uh, you know, it's crafted from his body. Or her body, again, I don't know. I don't mean to misgender a spider monster. That'd just be rude. There we go. Excellent. Let me just keep all that nice and painted there. Let's get the back of his hand a little more there. It's not really... I should adjust my focus a little maybe, but you can see you got the gray spots where the primer is showing through here on the back of the hand. And we don't really want that now, so we will make our adjustment. There we go. His cheek here a little too, a little thin coming from the clean brush, so... That base coat nice and established. One smooth, contiguous color is what we're looking for just yet. There'll be more detail to come. Set that fellow aside. Inside our brush. And move on to the last of our four survivors. This fellow here is interesting because he's got a shield made out of the face of the uh, spider bug thing. You can see it's multiple sets of eyes throughout there and it's little grinning maw. It's uh, spooky. But I enjoy spooky, so. He's got a very similar look to his friend over there facially. It's a little weird. Maybe it's two sets of twins that are benefiting from that spider being killed by their village hunters. Who knows? But again, just coming through here, giving him a nice even coat. 
I'm going to be a little sloppy around the edges. We're not worried about our precision cleanup just yet. Just getting our base colors down. When I get my camera system all figured out, I'll be doing proper narrow focused video tutorials once a week. Then I'll be doing live streams at the same time twice a week, probably Friday and Saturday evenings, maybe Thursday and Friday evenings. We'll be running those for four hours at a stretch. So there'll be some regularly scheduled programming here if that's the kind of thing that interests you. Go on through here. Paint the underside of his palm a little here. None of this is the exciting, sexy stuff yet. It's just your ho home basic steps. Oh boy, there go the dogs. Real bastards, but fortunately they're very brief. There shouldn't be a lot of that in my feeds. And then Pickles and Toki. After Pickles the Drummer and Toki Wartooth from the Adult Swim program Metalocalypse. The wife and I are big fans. Although me probably a little more than the wife. If I'm being honest. Not a lot of skin on these folks, they're pretty fully clothed, so there isn't a lot to worry about there. And that makes this a pretty nice little brief introduction, too. Now, when I first started Miniatures, I would have said, you know what, these are done now. And then I moved on to another color. But I mean, if you look at them, they're so flat, they lack any kind of depth or detail or nuance and I guess it's skin color you know and if you're just going for a real quick tabletop job that's uh you know that's perfectly fine that's something you can do but if you want to wow people or start to do this for a living now like I do you're gonna have to start considering the next necessary steps to bring out those details and add a little more realism to your scene alright so next off here we're going to start developing some color in these cheeks. And a little depth and a little nuance to our characters. Now we go back through and we look here at the Halberd girl, the one we started with. She's real flat and needs a little touch up here and there still. That's a good thing about batch painting. I generally dislike it because it gets tedious, you know, a little monotonous, but it does allow your paint layers time to dry so you can go back and say, you know what, this needs another little pizzazz to really cover. You want a nice even layer because our next step we're already going to start developing details. If you're working with an uneven base coat, you're just pushing yourself into a world of hurt there. There we go. So, now, we're going to take just a brush tip of our violet red here. Just a little bit. Alright, and we'll set it down here in a little section. And then we'll take some of our flesh tone. And we'll stir those two together. And you can see how we're starting to develop like a rosy pink in there just a little. Alright, we'll take that pink now. And we will apply it to her lips. to the areas that are going to be shadowed. So we're looking here at the underside of the jaw some. I'm 
both sides of the face and any area that really lies in shadow. Let's grab another little tip there. A little splash there. Get us our star on. And we're going to do that in all the undersides a very skin area, right? And we can start to develop our knuckles a little here, right? It doesn't have to be beautiful, it doesn't have to be super precise, because we're going to be cleaning it up. Grab just a hint more, work it in there just like that, get our nice pink going here. And you also want to start thinking about the areas that are naturally more colored in a Caucasian skin tone than other, right? Palms tend to be red, knuckles tend to be red, knees, elbows tend to have a little more color than the wide flat areas. So we just come down here on these undersides, start to develop that pink a little more. Get down there in the neck area, some pink. And we're blocking this in at this stage, so don't be worried if you're looking at it and you go, those are just patches of pink I have on my model now. What are you doing, Will? Well, you'll see soon enough. You'll see soon enough. We'll be bringing the natural base tone, just the straight beige red up. And then we'll be highlighting it. Rinsing our brush out. Oh, geez, shouldn't be touching my cameras now. And back to wh Whip Gal there. Right, we're going to be doing the same, just grab a little bit of our violet red, stir it in with our beige red, and get ourselves that nice mid range pink there. Do the same thing here. We're just gonna grab her lips, the bottom of her face, around her eyes a little. We're gonna give her a little color there. And really just starting to kind of hint at where our shadows are gonna lie. Think about what the details of the body look like. even coating doing all these models on commission part of a big old 400 model commission for a fellow out of Japan I'm doing a bunch of dioramas for him pretty much painting the entirety of the kingdom death system so if you like these models this will be a place to stay tuned because there are a lot of them coming down the pipe Back on Sword and Shield Dude. We're just doing the same here, just hitting the underside of his face some, really. He's got nice sharp cheekbones, so we can paint all the way up there. Hit him under the nose a little. A little more focused around the eyes on the fellas. Not that the ladies in any kind of post apocalyptic situation with giant monsters would be wearing any kind of eye makeup, but. It helps to soften the features and give a more traditionally feminine aesthetic to the pieces, which is good. You want to overemphasize things too. When you're dealing with a 28 millimeter scale, the light needs a little help to do its job. You can't just paint things like you would if they were a one to one scale and expect them to show. There we go, there, fellas. Looking pretty good. Still a real fast process at this point. Grab a little more of our violet red. Stir it in there. Mix in a little more of our beige red. 
I've been doing this long enough now that I eyeball the mixture because I know what I'm looking for. But if you're starting out, you might want to keep a little recipe book. You might want to make an effort to remember two parts to one part or however you want to do it. But after you've done it for a minute now, you'll, uh, you know, you'll generally just be able to eyeball it. I don't think there's a real exact formula, but some people disagree. Some people like to have every little bit of it 100% plotted out. And that's fine. If it works for them, it works for them. If it works for you, it works for you. I just like the path of least, path of least resistance myself. Probably why I became a painter for a living. Specifically a toy painter. Alright, now they're all tarted up. Looking like uh, some made-up French girls from the 1700s, but that's fine. That's just good. That's exactly what we want at this point. We're going to rinse out this brush. And then we're going to switch to a size 1. I still use Windsor & Newtons. Uh, this is a Windsor & Newton size 1 round tip sable that I'm switching to. But really... Any brush you grow comfortable with is the brush for you. And the first thing I'm going to do with this brush here, you see how much finer of a point that is, is I am going to establish the eyes. Now you could just paint the eyes white, right? Which is a mistake for a couple of reasons. Right. One, eyes aren't white. If you paint them pure white on there, they'll look like shocked cartoon figures. Right. So we're going to use our ivory to fill them in. But before we even do that, we're going to define where the eyes go with the black red. Right. If we put the white right against this light skin tone here, right, there isn't enough of a distinction to show you where the eyes stop. Right. And you can't. Well. You could, but I wouldn't advise trying to paint the eyelashes and all that. We're going to take some of our pure black red here. And again, just the tip. You see how I'm straightening my bristles in the palette here. We're going to go to this lady's face, and we're just going to define her eyes. Now, if you don't have the muscle memory for this, and you make them a little too large on the first time, that's fine. We're going to come back through and paint our skin tones again. So there's no real mistake there. Remember the shape of the eyes. Take a look at the model, where the eye is sculpted into it. And then also think about the effect you're trying to make eyes. Almond shape, a little wider in the middle. And you just get right down in there. And you block in those eyes. Now when I first started out, I used a method from Reaper Miniatures called Bet Davis Eyes, where you painted the whole area around the eye in this color, and then you used the white to fill in, and then sealed it using the skin tone around. And now I use a kind of a variation on that there. And you can see there now she has these like demon eyes. Which is exactly what we're going for, 100%. Set her aside, let her little demon eyes dry up. Move on to this next gal. Man, my two-sided tape does not want to stick today. That's okay. You don't want the paint to be a physical form on the end of your bristles when you're doing detail work like this. You want it to just be coloring the bristles on your brush because otherwise it's going to pool off onto your model and you're just going to have the dickens of a time. to grab from the pool of paint and drag outwards 
until I've got both the shape of the bristles I want and the amount of paint that I want on the brush proper. She's still looking a little wacky eyed here. So we're gonna tighten that up. I have no idea why my two sided tape is not sticking to this cork today. There we go, maybe it'll do a little better job right there. Come on through. Bingo bango bongo boom. There we go. We have given her Satan eyes. Camera does not want to focus on this little gal. But you can see the red. Moving on to the fellas. Same as before. Coming in here and giving him some devil eyes. Just fell in that area quite generally with the Vallejo model color black red. You can be much sloppier than this at this stage if you want even. That is 100% up to you. It all depends on how much cleanup you want to do in the next steps. Been up partying all night. Excellent. Now we get into a bit of precision here. Gotta make sure you got a fine tip on your brushes, it'll hold. I want to grab some of this pure ivory here, this nice off eggshell white. And we're gonna come in here and keeping inside the red demon eyes we painted, we're gonna paint the whites of her actual eyes in. As you probably can't see, because I'm terrible at this still, why will it not catch a focus on her face? I do not know, but we have those eyes whited in. Oh man, this tape. It sticks to my hand just fine, but will not stay stuck to this cork. It's taunting me. See, now that was too much paint on my brush there. I know she's bugging eye, but that's all right, because we can still fix that. Take that brush there. Don't rush this step, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Let's get some more tape on the bottom of that. That's just maddening. there because I 
got the time. So I'm going to come up here under there where that white spilt. Just clean it right up. Boom. Just say no, sir. Not today. Oh. Remember, it looks like she's got like a bloody face there at this point. But it won't forever. Let me get this focus adjusted here. It's driving me mad. It's probably been driving viewers away this whole time. the tip of the brush come right on into here set up there and again it looks like their face is all rotted out like they're zombies or something at this point but that's just because we're still missing some steps Hold your breath like you're sharpshooting. There we go. Fellow's eyes are nice and wide up, and I'm still not catching focus on that face, which is. does not want to focus on him at all. There we go. Looking super grizzly. That's just the way we like him. brush. Oh, grizzly. So I'll paint that white in there. Just like that. That's our brush. 
wash out. Grab some more of this black red that we used to rain our eyes with. And do just that, rain our eyes. The gals have these like gold chains drape over their faces, which create a bit of a prominence. Hard to work against. See that we got the one eye in good, we need the other eye. Clean up the top there. here outside. And just like that. Alright. So you can see, good lord, this tape today. I need a new roll, I think. You can see this gal. Her face is looking quite grim. So now, we get to tidy it all up. We're going to do so pretty simply here. We're just going to take some of our base skin tone, right, and start to edge our way around these eyes, locking them into place and removing some of that gore look that we get from the black red. Red does a fine job of basing in the eyes, making them look like they have the eyelashes. But a little goes a long way. Quite a long way. Don't be afraid to grab some black red and keep going back and forth. The best miniatures you've seen painted on the planet now are a series of steps. Ain't nobody doing this in one go and going, you know what, that is that is perfect. And it requires no adjustment. And if they tell you they are, they're lying. Jewelry makes that one eye difficult there. That is fine. Because I am in no rush. There we go. I still need a lot of adjustment, I'm afraid. Which is a shame. But this here is going to be a process. So I hope you all are willing to learn a little with me. Clean up this fellow's face and eyes. No need for the dark side of the nose there. There we go. I'm 
way this picture quality is just terrible right now. That'll be my cross to bear moving forward here, won't it? I'm losing a lot of fine detail in the feed. And that is good for no one. It's not good to learn on, and it's a waste of time to broadcast on. Alright. I'm going to pause the streams for a while. Let's see if I can't get these cameras a little better situated for the fine detail. Uh, thanks for watching, if you have been, and if not, well, frankly, at this point, I don't really blame you. <laughs>